Today we are looking at two of these. How to assess the voice of the Lord from the world that impasses the spirit of dominion or the spirit of faith. One, engage in searching of scriptures with prayer and fasting. Why? There is always a barrier, a resistance to you and me assessing the light of the world. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4, In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them that believe not, lest the light should break forth into their heart. And some of these barriers will not go except by prayer and fasting. This kind, there are some kind that will never go except by prayer and fasting. Albeit, this kind goeth not out except by prayer and fasting. Lord, this is not supposed to be. Show me the way out. Then you engage the covenant platform of fasting. Is this not the fast that I've chosen? Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thy head shall spring forth speedily. We engage the covenant platform of prayer and fasting to assess the voice of God that will impart us with the spirit of faith and set us upon our feet. Lord, I've been reading these materials on prosperity. I, I, I have all the stories, but I'm yet to identify the secret. Oh Lord, show me the secret of kingdom prosperity. And so, I took responsibility, engaging a three day of fasting and searching. Come and say fasting and searching. Many only knew about fasting and prayer. You don't know about fasting and searching. You can pray and fast for life until you assess light on any subject matter, the struggle continues. Then, on the third day, the voice of the Lord, like the voice of many waters, Ooh, my son David, my prosperity plan is not a promise. It does not answer to prayers. My prosperity plan is not a promise. It has no respect for fasting. My prosperity plan is, my plan is a covenant until your part is played. I am not committed. He was speaking to me raw from Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18. That was the voice that imparted me with the spirit of faith for financial dominion which has been all along. I can pass a book to you, I can pass a voice to you. But what is this covenant? He said, why the earth remaineth, say time and harvest shall not cease. How reliable is this covenant? Except my covenant be not with the day and with the night. Now, I was with Jesus. I heard these words from Jesus. No, no, it's not a fabrication. I have been saying this since then. You know, I don't keep anything. God tells me, I say it. The devil that will make me not to say what God tells me is not born. Amen. <laughs> when you see me roar against evil, I'm roaring. A signal by God. You're feeling irrelevant. My wife is here, the only wife I have. I have never discussed a prophetic word with her in her life. Prophets don't even compare notes. Prophet to prophet, no. It's a dossier the Lord mandate. You may laugh it to scorn today, you pay for it tomorrow. 
No one has ever mocked a prophetic word from a God anointed prophet without paying the price. <laughs> I've seen quite a few things. There are many things you can't say in the public here. God's armor. You, you speak a thing against the Holy Ghost. Man, you pay dearly. Most of the time, unforgivable sin. I've never spoken to impress you once. God tells me something. Ooh. I pray that this prophetic season will deliver maximally in your life. So I caught that voice in a fast. Fasting and searching should become your new approach to questions bugging questions of your life. Fasting and such. One of my daughters here had me say, there is no question in this world without an answer in the book. Yes. And began to search for the answer for a family crisis. And started from Genesis. He found it in Jeremiah. Many people are too lazy. They are too lazy. Problem is staring you in the face and they told you the answer is in the book in your hand and you are not looking for it. Fasting and praying, powerful. But fasting and searching, more powerful. So let's combine the two. Can I tell you this? You'll never miss the voice of God on any issue of interest to you again. It comes, it comes. And it can't come without you knowing. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I have never been involved in arranging on how God's word comes to pass. His hand is up to it. Anytime, any day, anywhere. God's word concerning you today will come to pass without a human hand. Daniel used that system in Daniel chapter 10 verse 1 to 12. He was waiting on the Lord to assess a particular secret from heaven and that for 21 days. The seed was lifted and the answer came true. Before this month is over, no question of your life will be without an answer from the Lord. Number two, be committed to attending church services. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Come and learn of me. For make a lonely heart, and ye shall find rest for your souls. And when we come to the church, we have come to Jesus. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22 to 24. But ye are come to Mount Zion the city of the living God to the heavenly Jerusalem to the numerical company of angels to the general assembly of the church of the firstborn that are written in heaven to God the judge of all to the spirit of just men made perfect and to Jesus and what did he say in Matthew 11, 28 and 29 come to me where am I? in Zion where is Zion? the church of the firstborn so we come to Jesus in church to have our understanding open up so our faith can come alive. Now, Psalm 73 and verse 17, the word says, when I thought to know this was so hard for me, then when I thought to know, he said, 
until when I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. Until I entered into the sanctuary of God, then understood I their end. So the sanctuary of the Lord is the center of spiritual understanding. And spiritual understanding is the booster of faith. So the farther you are from church, the less alive your faith until he dies. Come to me, you find rest. And they that believed have entered into rest. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2 and 3. You believe, you intend to rest. You believe, you intend to rest. Understanding that word, how can I? I'm going to understand it, open up. I believe. Understanding triggers faith. And we find that in church. There are many things you and I may have read at home and then you come into church. The same verse. Light just sprang up. Be committed to build your faith. Be committed to be under the teaching priest of the world. You know, I will give you pastors after my own heart who shall feed you, Jeremiah 3, 15 and 16, with knowledge and understanding. So pastors are ordained to feed the flock with knowledge and understanding. And it shall come to pass when you be multiplied and increased in the land. So you end up multiplying and increasing under the teaching ministry of your God or the shepherds. Can I hear your amen? amen? Be committed to attending church services for boosting your spiritual understanding and building your faith. Now, whether the word of faith or the spirit of faith, they feed on the same substance, the word of God. No matter the impartation of the spirit of faith on anybody's life, if he stops feeding on the word, it will die. Now, how to be imparted with the spirit of faith from an anointed carrier? We've tried to examine that before. We say first identify a carrier. Now, receive the person of the carrier. Matthew 10, 41. We said also last week, believe in the ministry of the carrier. Second Chronicles 20, 20. And then crave for what he carries. What do you want? I want double of the spirit upon you. And he got it. Crave for what he carried. And then today we're looking at it. Engage in a soul tie with the carrier. Engage in it. Look. As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave you. Second Kings 2 verse 4, verse 6, and then verse 8. I will not leave you. I will not leave thee. I will not. And he went on until he got it. Now the spirit of Elijah doth rest upon Elijah. As in water face answers to face, so the heart of man answers to another. There must be a link. Proverbs 27 and verse 19. There must be a link. An emotional link between you and the carrier to assess what he carries. To assess what he carries. You saw how emotional Joshua was about Moses. My Lord Moses forbid you. No matter where you find Moses, you will find Joshua. You will find him. There is a connection, an inseparable connection. And then at the end of the day, take the Joshua, the son of Nun, a man in whom is your spirit. That's where it ended. Engage in a soul tie with the carrier. I'm a privileged carrier of the spirit of faith upon Egan. 
And when Egin was going to heaven, now let me tell you this mystery. The Lord said to me, someone as close to you as your cloth is about coming over. And I said, oh, my biological father, because he's the next in line to die. Amen. He was old enough to die, man. He said, no, again. And I told my wife unequivocally, there is no guesswork. I said, again, is about to go. To show it was no joke, I said, we must go now. Because I saw now in it. Again was in America. I'm in this forest. You know when they say Elijah will go today, Elijah said, I know it. You are not the one to tell me, I know it. I know it. I know it. That's when there's a soul tie. Now when you see that song, you are wishing a cardiac evil and you want to carry what he carries. You mess up. You won't come near it. <laughs> we had a very interesting experience one time we were in America and these grandchildren of the sage, Kennedy again, were flowing to my wife. Flowing, there was no arrangement. Like, the Bible is a manual for living. Yes, sir. So if your soul is connected with your prophet, you become entitled to what he carries. Not <laughs> I was talking to someone the other time, I said, there is no way the man can Copeland plan will impress me to take his counsel. If you do what you are going to do and you don't regret in six months, I'm not a prophet. He went ahead four months after. Kata, kata. You, uh, what am I looking for? I want it to be better for you than for me. So, you know, yeah, yeah. Life, when your soul is tied up, the flow goes. Your prophet is not your friend, though. Is your God's guardian agent in the path of life. They see what you don't see. And they know what you may never know. By grace of election, not because they are smart and they are skillful and all. That's how Elisha got it. That's how Joshua got it. You will get it. That's how I got it. I don't know how many carries the mantle of Egan, but I know I carry. I know I'm one of the principal carriers of that spirit. You see, I'm walking like this. That's Egan walking. Praise God. Amen. Struggle free life, stress free life. That's your portion from now. If you must manufacture a car before you ride one, you will check till you die. Somebody manufactures it and you buy into it. You pay for his time, his energy and resources to ride a car, not that I must manufacture a car. And we have it, the same spirit of faith. It's the same. You can't manufacture a new one. And that goes from one generation to another. It will come upon your life today. Finally, to assess the spirit of faith from a carrier, this is a big one. Engage in a sonship tie with the carrier. That is the automatic realm of access. The DNA of a man is easily replicated in his biological children, true or false? Do they have to pray for it? Genuine spiritual sonship entitles you to automatic impartation of the spiritual virtues of who so that your father may be. Glory to God. If you watch it, in terms of many parameters mention the Jew and the redeemed Christian church and you mention this small one and this church 
in this country. There is no argument. There is no argument. Mention this small one, and you mention his sons in ministry. You mentioned David in Portugal. You mentioned Paul. And you mentioned several others across the nation. The, the reality of spiritual sonship automatically replicates the spiritual DNA of your father in you. Glory to God. There are many, many members, but there are very few sons. They are just in church socializing. They are just socializing in church. They are not spiritually connected. Now, mention the man Kennedy again, a pioneer of the myths of prosperity. And then you mention David, his protege, and very public son. You know the difference between our father and my father? Yes, we don't know the difference. In our culture in Africa, every elderly man in your family is your father. You see, as our father said, that's the difference from my father. How many know our father and my father? You know the difference? Go and learn it. <laughs> There's a big difference between our father and my father. When you see someone say, our father in the Lord, now that's not his father. Amen. That's a corporate uh, agenda. <laughs> my father. Now, you know the good thing is that you don't struggle to share the virtues of your father is transmitted as long as you are on key with Jesus. You are born again, you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you have capacity to bear it. So it is naturally released to you. Can I hear your amen? amen. No one here will miss his own inheritance in this commission. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. You never find any bona fide son running than his father. How many have found that before? My tongue has never moved against the man again since 1976 when I came in contact with him. 1976, once, once in my life. Sonship is not theoretical, it's practical. And a good man liveth an inheritance for his children's children. Proverbs 13, verse 22. It's automatic. It comes down on his own. You won't miss your own inheritance in this commission. That was the cry of Elijah. And everything Elijah came through, through him. Prophets are ordained fathers to the people to whom they are sent, those who care to receive them. You remember the king of Israel? My father, my father, shall, shall I smite them? Prophets are fathers to kings. Prophets don't look for kings. Kings look for them. Yeah. 
one of the capital proofs of the spirit of faith. Now we've gone through two of them. We see speaking force that speaks the unspeakable, as in the case of David before Goliath. It's a driving force that makes unimaginable moves, like in the case of the paralytic man being brought down through the room, drives people, that's the many. Today it's a stabilizing force that puts one at rest in the midst of the storm. The spirit of faith puts you at rest in the midst of the storm. Everybody, hey, hey, ah, you are at rest in the midst of the storm. They woke up Jesus and said, Master, Master, don't okay, we perish. Who is perishing there? He awoke and rebuked the storm and the wind ceased and there was a great calm at rest in the midst of the storm he was asleep upon a pillow at rest the spirit of faith puts you supernaturally at rest supernaturally at rest this man you are looking at this address what you are saying is your view. It has never imparted on my life. Can I tell you how much address I am? 1996, one editor of a newspaper lived in Gawan Estate and brought me, uh, what do they call it? Uh, the advanced copy. <laughs> he said, I'm the ed uh, editor of this newspaper and I live in Gawan and I feel like giving you an advanced copy. I said, I don't read paper. Go to my office, you'll find one person there, they call Uwa. Is the one who reads our papers. Sir, till tomorrow I have not checked what was in that paper. The spirit of faith. You are talking about me and I'm me. You can know me more than me. You are telling your view that I didn't talk to you about. So you can say anything you want. Doesn't it? If they said anything wrong there, sir, well, I don't even know the name of the paper must have died a long time. Life. I was coming in to Canaan land, 1999, during the construction. They were selling things and there was a hold up party and, and at Abuli Egba. So there was a magazine. I was, my picture was so beautiful at the back of it. <laughs> so the man said, buy paper. I said, we don't buy paper. He said, what of this? I said, we don't buy paper. The man burst into laughter. He <laughs> saw so I was the one behind it. Now, 1999, I have not asked. You feel your life is so much junk that you miss where you are going. I have not asked what did they say, I say. <laughs> I have not asked. And I have not come down one bit. I have not asked once what did they say. Up to now, people are still castigating Jesus. See how much he has turned your life. Amen. Amen. I was in Israel and I saw a book being hawked. They say, Jesus is not the Messiah. That's the title. I said, the one who told my life around is not the Messiah. It can be anything to you, that's your problem. <laughs> So it's part of the ministry of Jesus. Woe unto you when no man shall speak good of you. Just know that you are calm in the midst of the storm. There was a rising wave against our ministry for seven solid years. All kind of unprintable castigations. He's a devil. He's this and that. We were just growing in lips and bands. Why they were making noise on the other side? I mean, the growth is now global. I know where we were when they were doing that. And I know where Jesus brought us to when they were tired. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I won't deceive you. Nothing goes on in this land without being privileged to be confided in by God. I didn't earn it. It's an election of grace. In the name of Jesus, nothing 
will upset your destiny anymore. No one will carry you away from Jesus to the devil. No one will succeed to frustrate your destiny. Let me hear your loudness, amen. From now, remain at peace in the midst of any kind of storm. Ah, that storm is over today. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lift up your right hand and bless the name of the Lord, everybody. If anything came across to you, just thank him for it. In Jesus' precious name. Now today's a covenant day of fruitfulness. You brought any point of contact for miracle children, bring them out. And listen to this prophetic word from scriptures. Speaking to the household of Israel, God said, and thou shalt be blessed above all nations, above all people. There shall not be male nor female barren among you nor among your cattle. That is heaven's verdict for his covenant people. Whether the issue is arising from the male or from the female does not matter. You shall be blessed before anybody else on the earth is blessed. There shall no male or female be barren among you or among your livestock. So a verdict has gone forth regarding your fruitfulness. And the scriptures cannot be broken. Now, what, how does that concern me? If you be Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. And he has according to the promise. So every child of God is a spiritual Jew. Every child of God belongs to the Abrahamic lineage. Every child of God. So he's talking to us, the redeemed of the Lord. You shall be blessed above all people. There shall not be male nor female barren among you nor among your cattle. How many received that body right now? Well, every ordeal of barrenness is over today. We also saw faithfulness as our heritage in Christ. The fruit of the womb. Lord, children are an heritage of the Lord. And the fruit of the womb is his reward. So, fruitfulness is our heritage in Christ and no matter what may have happened the blessings of Abraham that Jesus connected us to entitles us to supernatural fruitfulness at 100 and at 90 all natural laws responsible for fruitfulness all gone yet According to that which was spoken, Isaac came. So never mind medical values. They are inferior to heavenly body. Therefore, I declare your heritage of children delivered to you today. 
receive it in the name of Jesus. In case it's a cause, it's a Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law by being made a cause for us. For it is written, cause is everyone that hangeth upon the tree. That the blessing of Abraham, which includes the blessing of supernatural fruitfulness, may come to us who are Gentiles and may obtain the promise of the Spirit through faith. So every cross of barrenness is declared broken today. Any agent of the devil that has vowed that you will not carry your children, ah, goes down for your sake today. Every gang up of hell against your fruitfulness is swallowed up in victory today. Just now, some fellows, miracle children have been released. It's also important to know that faith fruitfulness is listed among our rewards for serving God and the interest of his kingdom. Thou shalt serve the Lord thy God. He shall bless your bread and your water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. There shall nothing cast their young nor be barren among them that serve me in thy land and the number of your days I will fulfill. This is one of the most addicted serving people on this earth you will ever find. Therefore, in the name of the Lord Jesus, your reward of fruitfulness is released today. Your reward of fruitfulness is released today. He said, Lo, children are the heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. His part of our listed reward for serving God in truth and in deed. Therefore, for anyone under the seed of barrenness, that is serving God in this place at the Zona Center, at the WSL, Sanctuary Keeper, CCU, and what more, dying to see souls saved. In the name of Jesus, I release your fruitfulness today. This covenant day of fruitfulness is the last you will need to bring baby item. What more? Our father is the baby maker. Your father, say my father, is the sole baby maker. I cannot remain a baby beggar. <coughs> Before I formed thee in the womb, I knew thee. <laughs> I am the one that formed thee. My father is the baby maker. My father. And the I am that I am. He's still the baby maker today. I am the Lord I chain not. He's still making babies today. The Bible says we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Psalm 139 and verse 4, 14. I praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy words, and that my soul knoweth right well. It is he that has made us. Psalm 100 verse 3, and know we are ourselves. Your father, say with me, my father, is the baby maker. I cannot remain a baby beggar. Nobody in your lineage will have to wait again. You are coming out today and everybody connected to you is coming out at the same time. But joy 
and rejoicing is a covenant requirement for fruitfulness. And that's where the devil has caught many people. Therefore, by the anointing today, every siege of depression is destroyed in everyone's life. <laughs> Hannah had to rejoice to become the mother of Samuel. His countenance, our countenance was no more sad and God remembered her. Every attack of depression on any waiting father and mother is caused by the anointing today. When joy with us, the harvest perishes. Amen. Joy chapter 1 and verse 12. He said, all the harvest of the field is perished because joy withered it, because joy is withered away from the sons of man. Your harvest from this service shall not perish. Therefore, this anointing shall be to you the anointing of joy and rejoicing. This oil shall become the oil of joy and gladness in your life. Your countenance will no longer be sad. Let go of bitterness. No reaction to your mockers. Let what you see be the reason for your joy. He said, oh, for the joy that was set before him. How many of you can see that you are coming to dedicate your children in Naaman's sign? How many can see that? So that should be your focus for joy. Therefore, your joy shall not fail anymore. Now, as a seed of Abraham, you are not permitted to suffer dry seasons. Isaiah 51 verse 2 and 3 Look to Abraham your father and to Sarah the beardy for I called him alone and blessed him and increased him for the Lord shall comfort the church Zion he will comfort all our waste places he will make her wilderness like Eden and her desert like the garden of the Lord joy and gladness shall be heard in her thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry melody now, every seed of Abraham is not permitted to suffer dry season. Therefore, every of your wilderness is turned into Eden today. Every of your desert is turned into the garden of the Lord. Only joy and gladness will be had from your quarters from henceforth. Now, from this service, all you'll be hearing from everybody is congratulations. You'll be hearing congratulations on every point of mockery. Because you are not entitled to suffer dry season as a seed of Abraham. And if you be Christ, you are Abraham's seed. And he has gone to the promise. And Jesus died to connect us to the blessedness of Abraham, which is, which is anti-dry season. No more dry season in your life. <laughs> Secondly, the part of the just is as a shining light that shines more and more and more and more. Romans chapter 5 and verse 9. Being freely justified by his blood. <laughs> so we are the justified people. Every child of God is listed among the justified. And that word in Proverbs 4, 18 is the part of the justified. It's as a shining light that shines more and more to the perfect day. Remember Romans 8, 29 and 30. The Bible says the people he did for no, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. 
He said, Moreover, whom he did betrayed, then me also call. And whom he called, then me also justify. And whom he justified, then he also glorified. Shame and reproach is not permitted. Every child of God under the sound of my voice that's going through any air of shame and reproach, that battle is over today. reproach only has meaning when it's directed at some persons that are challenged. Shame and reproach in code is meaningless when it's directed at someone that's breaking forth and breaking forth. It's only Ijailarani. Ijailarani. It's envy. Anybody calling someone like me now near you has lost his mind. Complain. He's upset. His life is under torment. Are they the only one? Everything is working here. Because Jesus had worked here. How many things are working? Now, from now. He said, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. From now, all things we keep working together for your good. Amen. Amen. No more dresses. The covenant that you are in forbids dry season. Yes. Serving God forbids dry season. He said, and all these things that others are struggling for shall be added to you. That becomes your portion. Well, the good news is this week marks the end of dry seasons in your life. Every dry business takes a new turn today. Every dry family life where husband and wife are living like in a dormitory ends today. Every dryness of our children that create concern for you day and night, that dryness ends today. No more dry season in your health. No more dry season in your business. No more dry season in your career. In the name of Jesus. So shall it be. Give the Lord a big hand of praise, everybody. There are people here this morning that need to turn their life over to Jesus and become a bona fide beneficiary of these wonders that have been made available today. You are here, you want to turn your life over to Christ? Leave your vacuum slide and end your journey in eternity with Christ and let her pray with you. Wherever you are this morning, you want me to pray with you, please stand to your feet. You want to turn your life over to Jesus, please stand to your feet. You want your sins forgiven, please stand to your feet. You want to become a member of the household of God, please stand to your feet. You want God to become your father, not our father, stand to your feet. Wherever you are, come and stand. I'll be praying for you right there. Please stand to your feet, stand to your feet right now. God bless you. Now, Chuck, begin to give the Lord a big hand for this wonderful harvest today. Amen. Can I have you please move to the nearest aisle to where you are? Some church officials are there. I'll be praying for you on that spot. Please just move on there and they will give you a little sleep. Try to fill it up. At this time, can I ask the ushers, please make available these two materials? 
this coming Saturday, there shall be water baptism. Please encourage all our new converts to be there. We have it in about 46 locations, or thereabout, across uh, Lagos and our various provincial centers. So please make sure you are there. I shared it a bit during the week. Jesus says about believes and is baptized shall be saved. And whosoever believes not shall be damned. So please fulfill all righteousness by surrendering yourself to water baptism the way Jesus did. Saturday in the morning at 7 o'clock, there will be water baptism at, at all our provincial centers. Also, there are many, many winners that need to return back home. So we have testimonies of return winners. This is to target every winner around you that's thrown in the towel. You want to bring them back to Jesus so you can redecorate their life. Please get that copy and use that to reach out to them. They'll give you a copy of this place and a copy of the water baptism uh, material. Then those who are not here last Sunday, please reach out to collect the materials that were distributed last Sunday. The ushers will have them in their hands to give that to you. Now, there are also people here this day that will need to rededicate their life to Jesus, reconnect back to God. Wherever you are this morning, you want to reconnect back to Jesus. Maybe you are one say, but through one or two challenges of life, there was a disconnect between you and God. You want to reconnect back to God. Can I ask you to stand up to at the same time and I'll pray with you. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus, please stand. God bless you. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus, please stand. God bless you. God bless you. Please stand. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus, please stand. God bless you as you do. God bless you as you do. Some more need to get up wherever you are. Get up right now and reconnect back to God. Reestablish your union with Christ and begin to live your own family life right now. God bless you. All of us who are standing up on this second call, also move to the nearest uh, eye to where you are standing, and then I'll be praying for you on that spot. Now, everybody standing along the eyes that desire to be prayed for as mentioned, please bow your heads, lift up your right hand to heaven, and pray this prayer of faith after me. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you today. Forgive me all my sins and wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again that I may be justified. Right now, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. And I believe my sins are now forgiven. I'm justified by your blood. I am now a child of God. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Thank you, Jesus, for restoring me back to the faith. I receive grace from you today to serve you all the days of my life and unto eternity. Amen. Please keep that hands up as I pray. Father, I proclaim these individuals blessed today. They have stepped out of darkness into light. They will ne never step back into darkness anymore. I pray for grace to rest upon your life and keep you going till Jesus appears. You will not fail on this journey. You will live to overcome us life. You will make it all the way to heaven in the name of Jesus Christ. So shall it be. Sin shall no more have dominion over you. You will live to please God all the days of your life. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Congratulations. 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 Shall we all rise, please? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. The flyers for next Sunday, they give you two, two copies, please. Noiseless breakthrough banquet. And use that to invite your friends and ensure that they follow you to church and be established in the faith. Jesus is Lord. Amen. How many of you are having a really good time in this Operation Rescue? Amen. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Please.
please bring out your bottles of oil. God said, this shall be an holy anointing oil unto me throughout your generations. Exodus 30 and verse 31. That means the effect shall remain intact. I therefore decree the contents of your bottle today as the holy anointing oil. In the name of Jesus, every satanic yoke on any area of anyone's life is declared destroyed today. Four things to expect. Expect the yoke of dry season to be totally destroyed. Expect the yoke of barrenness, no matter the source, to be totally destroyed. Yeah. Expect the healing power of God that destroys the yoke of sickness and disease to come upon your life. Yeah. Expect that by this anointing today, there shall be a flow of divine favor in your life. Expect that this anointing coming upon your forehead will establish your dominion. It shall come to pass in that day that his body shall be taken away from your shoulder and his yoke from your neck. He said, and the yoke shall be destroyed. One day, one day, one day. Today is that day in your life. Today is that day in your life. The yoke of marital frustration, marital stagnation, marital delays, marital tension, whatever represents any yoke on anybody's marital destiny is destroyed today. Anybody's marital dry season is terminated today. Anybody's business dry season is terminated today. Anybody's career dry season is terminated today. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. This shall be to everybody here, particularly those blessed fathers and mothers of nations, the oil of joy and gladness. Nobody will ever ask you again what is wrong. Because your face won't look wrong. Your words won't look wrong. Your steps won't look wrong. Somebody cannot be walking smartly and say, what's wrong with your leg? No, it's when you are dragging and say, what's wrong with your leg? If somebody is walking briskly and say, excuse me, what's wrong with your leg? No, but when you're walking like this, and like this, they say, ah, he knows your leg. When your face looks so long, say, shake us you. From today, remain drunk with the joy of the Lord. Over your business and career, joy unspeakable. Over your family, joy unspeakable. Over your children, joy unspeakable. Your harvest will no longer perish. In the name of Jesus. With this oil on your head, the enemy shall not exert upon you anymore. The source of wickedness shall not afflict you anymore. Your dominion is established in the midst of your enemy. In Jesus' precious name. Now, 
that has become the holy anointing oil. Put a little of that oil on your fingertip and say to your forehead and begin to declare your deliverables. Begin to declare your deliverables. It's done, it's done, it's done, it's done, it's done, it's done. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And thank you, Lord. Call your own portion for. Call those things that be not as though they were. It's your portion today. Celebrate Jesus. In Jesus' precious name we are praying. It's done. Anyone you anoint with this oil, any child of God, it will terminate their dry season. And with that oil under your covers, you'll never know dry seasons again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please bring out your covenant baby items. If you brought them into church. Anybody and everybody that brought any contact point for their desired miracle children, please bring them up. Now, as you annoy those materials right now, with this holy anointing oil, they are turned to miracle babies. Yeah. Now annoy them, annoy those materials now, and after doing that, lift them up. In the precious name of Jesus, every item brought into church today, no matter their number, they are turned into practical miracle babies. The dedication of these children is this year. Their conception is right now. Yeah. Now, within the next two weeks, three weeks, every waiting mother is tested positive for pregnancy. Yeah. The battle is finally over. Yeah. Your long awaited testimony is delivered. The glory goes to Jesus. All of the glory goes to Jesus. All of the glory goes to Jesus. All of the honor goes to Jesus. All of the adoration goes to Jesus. Congratulations. You'll be hearing that beginning from now. Everybody give the Lord a big hand of praise. Amen. Just before we share the goodness. Concerning the ongoing operation rescue, what is God saying? God is saying to every winner, this is your season. How well you engage with this, we validate this. This is your day. He said, as you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Hebrews 4, 7. This is your time. They knew not the time of their visitation, though they suffered frustration. You won't miss this time. And this is your hour. This is your hour. Your hour is finally here. Life is an adventure in times and seasons. Wait a minute, just hold on. You can't change times and seasons. You can only engage with them. Can you change planting season in farming? Can you change harvest season in farming? Please don't let this time and season pass you by and what for this turnaround God as he shows up in your life. Many giants will rise from this operation. Yeah. And that includes you. Yeah. Lift up your two hands to heaven. Go in peace. Yeah. 
May every prophetic blessing proclaimed on your life today find speedy fulfillment. Your joy shall know no end from now. In the name of Jesus. As this operation rescue continues, no aspect of your life will be left in captivity. What to make happen for others, God has vowed to make it happen to you. As you are out for the rescue of others, my God will rescue you from any area of concern in your life. Remember, God does not reward efforts made, He rewards results obtained. This week is declared a week of obtaining results in your kingdom advancement endeavors. You shall obtain rewards in your prayer life. You shall obtain rewards, results in your outreaches. In the name of Jesus Christ. Go in peace. Return with your testimony. The same way this ministry enjoys noiseless breakthrough. You won't need to make noise anymore to make news. No one shall have any opportunity to ask who is your God anymore. Next Sunday is our noiseless breakthrough banquet. Take as much as you want. In the name of Jesus, it will speak loudest in your life. Shall we together share the goodness of the Lord in fellowship? God's goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen.